What's up guys and gals, we're here for the latest piece of One Piece, chapter 1119, entitled Emeth. What the hell is an Emeth? Well, honestly, I was still confused uh, when I read the chapter, but we're going to go forth and uh, talk about it. Um, the cover page has uh, Yamato uh, going through uh, the Kibi region, and she's getting uh, you know, hit with rocks and stuff by, by children and stuff who obviously probably lost their parents who hate Kaido and stuff, and of course, whether they know that this is Kaido's daughter or not, um, but the horns and all that stuff is kind of a dead giveaway sort of idea. So, yeah, so maybe, hopefully, Yamato's gonna learn on this journey, which is sort of the point of a pilgrimage in any uh, respect of the word, the, the travel, the hike, the journey, exactly, you know what I mean? So, uh, in different religions and different sects and different... Uh, uh, I guess life coach ways Generally speaking these are things on ways to find yourself and to learn about the world and learn about yourself Both externally and internally and stuff. I've never personally been on one, but that is sort of the point. So It's not supposed to be all sunshine and rainbows and I like that immediately out of the gate She's now suffering now that she's outside of the flower capital. She immediately suffers the repercussions of all the people that suffered for for decades who who absolutely despise and, and don't forgive they don't forget and you know that that's actually going to be a very humbling process so that's pretty nice um so either way we jump into the lavosphere uh and we see uh this is where stussy i think it's the lavosphere anyways um this is at the core and it said uh this is where kaku of course was let free by stussy stussy said can i let kaku go and blah blah, blah. and uh he immediately just says Leave, Stussy. You knew this would be my response, right? Friends, don't make me laugh. I did respect you. You were a relentless associate, but nothing will sway Luchi when he comes back. And this is where Stussy's crying and says, Kaku, I... And just he shouts, Leave! And you see that he... We don't see... He's definitely crying under that. You know, the, the, the only reason in anime, the only reason in anime and in manga that they always overshadow is because there's tears in the eyes. Whenever you see a shadow over a character's eyes, uh, whether they're wearing a hat or regardless, is because you know there's tears there. There's emotion in those eyes. So, Kaku, right here, this is a really... I actually wish they spent more time on this, and this is one of the flaws with One Piece. It's not an overall flaw. It would never sub subtract from the total score of what One Piece is. But I wish we had spent more time with this, so this was a bigger emotional impact. This is a heavy emotional impact, and it doesn't hit us, the readers, as hard because we've only known Stussy for all of five minutes. You know what I mean? So it's unfortunate because this should be a big thing, and Kaku's there is basically saying, like, he's saying the words, but he doesn't even believe them. He's like, you know, we weren't friends, we were colleagues, you know? So like I'm gonna let you, you let me go so I'll let you go but when Lucci shows up he's gonna kill you for trade for being a traitor so get the hell out of here you know you, you can't stay here and I'm not coming with you blah 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 what Kaku's doing now is he's got to put up a front he's like I don't want this I still he does see her as a friend obviously but he can't say that and he knows that Lucci will never see it his way. Kaku was always the more human of the two. And so this is really difficult for him as well. And we see that. So Stussy's still alive. Kaku's still alive. And unfortunately, I really think that Oda made a mistake by jumping away from this right away. Granted, some people love Egghead. I'm not a big fan of Egghead as, a, as an arc overall. I, I still think that Wano was far superior, even though so many people hated Wano, but they love Egghead. I don't know why. But uh, we jump away from this almost immediately, and I'm like, why? Why are we jumping away from something that's so good? In, in one page, I'm like... Oh, I, I want to see where this goes. I feel I feel bad for Kaku. I feel bad for Stussy. I feel bad for everyone. Let's go back to, uh, you know, two laughing clowns and white hair. Like, I'm like, what? I know this is One Piece and we're trying to have fun, but Jesus. And I know Luffy's the main character. I mean, you know, I'm calling him a white-haired clown is a little bit of a stretch. But still, like, they're laughing their asses off. They're giant. They're having a good party. Meanwhile, we have a, a, a heartbreaking scene right before. It just... 
tone shift. Like, I'm getting whiplash from the tone shift, you know what I mean? So, anyways, uh, we jump into it, and what a lot of people complained about with Bonnie and stuff is going to be solved immediately. So, let's just... Let's just table that, because so many people were gonna were so upset by this, and it's obviously explained away. So, yeah. So, anyways, there's like there's two Nikas. This is crazy. The Giants are happy. Everyone's going great. Uh, the bird friggin' uh, Goro say launches another fireball thing, and Luffy's like, "All right, here's the deal. Nothing works on these guys. So here's what you're gonna do. I'm taking a page out of uh, the Captain of the Seven Deadly Sins, Meliodas Dragon Sin book. Hit me with everything you got, crew. Wait, what? He's basically, he wants to pull a revenge counter. Done in very Looney Tunes fashion, but he's he's pulling a Seven Deadly Sins. He wants revenge counter. That's what he's doing. Uh, it's, it's been done before and it's done way better in Seven Deadly Sins, but still, that's what Luffy's trying to pull. Uh, so he says, like, yeah, so here's what you want to do. Give me your all and hit me with full force. Bonnie's like, you guys are all insane because Sanji immediately was like, yeah, all right, that's what he wants. Frankie's like, I get to test out my new laser. Dory and Broggy don't get in on this, and that kind of bothers me because I'm like, I feel like their power would add a shit ton. I'm still convinced that Dory and Broggy are likely stronger than... Just about everybody, like, their combined attack is probably stronger than everybody on the Straw Hat crew, with the exception of Luffy's best move and Zoro's, maybe. But Dory and Broggy combined clash, hockeyed up, you know, attack. I'm sure that's better than, than what Sanji or Frankie or anybody could do, or, or Bonnie at this point. But, I mean, once again, that's up for debate. But either way, they don't even have to get in on this. They're just like, hey, stop dancing. It's like, you guys were dancing five minutes ago, Captain. What are you talking about? It's like, yeah, well, now I'm telling you. It's a captain's orders. Now I'm telling you don't. So either way, uh, you know, the fire-breathing phoenix motherfucker decides to uh, launch his thing at Luffy. And Luffy's like, yeah, all right, you burnt me to a crisp. That was fantastic. But now I got a hold of you, bitch. What are you going to do now? And he's like, all right, so everybody hit me. So it's Ifrit Jumbe Hell. It's Impactful Strong Giant Nika Memories Right Punch. And they all hit Luffy right away. And he's like, holy shit, this hurts so much. And Luffy's like, holy crap, this hurts like crazy. And, and Bonnie's like, wait, it hurt you? Why are we doing this? Like, Bonnie has no clue. He's like, what the hell? And to be fair, when I was reading this, I'm like... Luffy, you're not... The, when I first heard that, I'm like, Luffy, you are not Meliodas. You don't have revenge counter. What are you doing? And then this whole idea that he's just using it as a big, giant spring. It's like, of course it hurts. You guys are using hockey and stuff. But now, Gum Gum, booming Don Balloon, and he uses all the... He takes in all the impact to use a giant spring. And fourth! And boom, he launches the girl, say, miles. I'm assuming this is going to be miles away. Now, I will give Luffy credit for this because it's like, listen, I don't know how to defeat these things. There's five of them right now. There's a lot of other shit going on. Now's not the time for me to go toe-to-toe -to -toe like Katakuri shit. Now's not the time for me to do to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kaido. You know, he's learned from certain instances when there's a time and a place. And now he's like, you know, we just need to get this thing off our ass. This is the best way I can figure to do it. Boom. Because he doesn't know how to defeat them yet. So he chooses this. And boom. Off goes Gorosei number three. Or whatever number he is. So anyways, boom. He's gone. I think that's Mars. I think that's Mars. Anyways, so Mars is gone. So, and they claim that he won't be back anytime soon. They even do the Team Rockets blasting off again. Twinkle. You know, in the sky, in the pale. So I'm going to assume that Meowth, that's right, he won't be back. Um, now, the Viking ship is ready to go. The giant ship is ready to go. It's like, yeah, all right, we good to go? It's like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's like, well, where's who's up and the others? They're going to meet us here. Yada, yada, yada. Atlas says, I'm going to go check. Uh, and they're like, wait, you know, York is still... So Atlas recognizes that York is still monitoring them and uh, is trying to talk to Lilith. So the Iron Giant is still underneath the ocean, right? And it's just like, 
and all of a sudden the transponder snail or the whatever snail is actually active again so I should have given Oda credit cut out the important details of course so I'm still right but the Vegapunk message is still coming through not just to us the readers but to the rest of the world so the big mentions of probably very vital and important information Oda has been cut out I feel like after 25 years I deserve something but anyways what do I know um but yeah the snail actually comes back and of a sorts that's why and stuff and so then we see whole cake we see kata curry and stuff watching on the video monitor and stuff it's like uh, and it's all back and it's like wait what what is he talking about it's like and everyone's like it's back on it's on like what what's going on was it a bad signal was it interrupted what happened so vegapunk continues his message saying to those that suffer for this i can only pray my voice reaches you so we miss the talk about the D-Clan stuff. Now York immediately says, Hey, Gorosei and stuff like that. Look, um, there's, you know, the, the snail's memory is still intact. You have to destroy that giant completely. The thing's still there. All you basically did was interrupt the uh, transmission for while it was knocked around a little bit. Now it's recovered. Now it's back on. Um, and then we see uh, Gaimo, uh Yeah, the dude in the treasure chest or whatever. He's happy. Stop chilling with a snake and his whatever. I forget, is there a cover to, Is that his girlfriend, daughter, somebody? Anyways. Um, so yeah. Uh and then Luffy's just like, wait, what's going on? Is there an explosion or rain or something like that? And it's the earthworm thing just launching for some reason, eight all the CP0 agents and launching them. Am I forgetting something? Like, am I missing something? But just launching them like rain into the sky and stuff. Just completely like, look, uh, all the, the monsters, the earthworm, you know, the dungeon worm from Darksiders 1 is friggin' launching out all these damn things. The Seraphim, the CP0 agents, a bunch of debris. It's like, this is nuts. Um, and then immediately tries to vacuum style and suck them back in. It's like, all the progress we're making, what the hell's going on and stuff. And that's when, uh, you know, Luffy immediately is like, nope, hockey up, suck it to you, Earthworm. And just takes him out. And they're just like, yeah, all the, you know, like the admirals and stuff, or the vice admirals are like, ah, this is so frustrating. And the giants are like, get him, Nika, yeah. Dum, dum, da, dum, 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 dum. They're all excited. This is when the boar one comes in and he's like, you know, all right, I'm gonna take them out and slams uh, right past where Luffy's fighting the Earthworm one. The boar's heading right for you. Look out, his skin's really tough and they're gonna smash the ship apart. The boar's trying to, the boar is the size of basically the giant ship or, or roughly and is launching itself off the island, which this is interesting. Things launching itself off of the island into the ocean. This is a devil fruit user. I'm just saying, if the thing gets submerged, I don't want any bullshit like, oh no, we're immune to the effects of water. <laughs> I don't want any of that shit. So anyways, bold and daring, but gonna ram right into it. This is where people are gonna be happy. Bonnie launched one attack as Nika and immediately is basically comatose back into her child form and Sanji's taking care of her and she's like I can't hold it being free like that that level of freedom is too tiring so once again she can affect something she can she can do this to a degree to to become a second Nika but for such a limited time for one good attack at best before it's like that's all I got. She might be able to get off two at best. And then she's like, yeah, no. So her, once again, she hasn't trained enough with it. It's very taxing. That makes sense. So I'm totally fine that Bonnie can basically, from what we understand, by the looks of it, she did the Looney Tune shit. She goes full gear fifth. What she believes Nika can do, what she's seen Nika can do, she can do. But it's very limited. It's time restrained as fuck. So yeah. So either way, we hear... Joy boy from of course the giant and the iron giant raises out of the sea Dorian Bragi are like what the hell and slam Boom Takes doesn't just punch 
the boar in the face, destroys one of its tusks completely. And then we hear, listen up, Emmet. The time is at hand. And the robot responds with, the time? Question. Dorian Bragi, what the hell is this thing? Luffy's excited because he's like, robot. Yes. What am I watching? I don't know, but I hate it. And that's pretty much the chapter. The romance lives on. So th there is a break next week before we get to chapter 1120. But I want to know who the hell's talking to this thing. Apparently the name of the giant is Emmet. Listen up, Emmet. The time is at hand. So something's actually talking to Emmet, the Iron Giant. Is it Zunisha? That was my only conclusion when reading the chapter. I haven't watched anybody others else's reviews on it yet or anything like that. But what do you guys think? Who is talking to this thing? This the, this Iron Giant is apparently named Emmeth. It's questioning who's talking to it. And the only other thing that we know that's connected to Joy Boy right now is Zunisha. So is Zunisha walked all the way to Egghead? Sensing Joy Boy? Ready to go? Are we going to get a mammoth about to... The original... The giant... Is Zo and Emmeth about to destroy the Gorosei? I mean, that'd be kind of cool. Um, but anyways, that's it for me. What did you guys think of the chapter? I have no idea, you know. I'm gonna have to watch other people's reactions, theories, reviews, and stuff like that. And see what other people are saying about this. Who is talking to this thing? But let me know down in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys back here next time for the next piece of One Piece. Looking forward to it. Hope you guys are too. See ya.